the discussion in comparative work generally, not just planning, but the discussion in comparative work has moved away from that now. And we accept that it's very difficult to have these universal concepts. They become so general, they're not very useful. And so we, we now talk about the equivalence of concepts. Can you think of any concepts? Think of a concept that's equivalent, that's universal, and would apply in all countries that might help us to understand the operation of the planet. Do you know, that was exactly what was in my mind. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> it's telepathy. <laughs> yeah. Participatory planning, yeah. Is that universal? Is that concept, participation or participatory planning, is it universal? Would it mean the same thing in China, in Vietnam, in Korea, in the US, in Brazil, in Turkey? It isn't, actually. You have to see it because people would see that word. It's socially constructed. It's a concept that's socially constructed. It depends enormously on the on the characteristics of the place. So some of these things immediately seem interesting and useful, and we do need to use them. I mean, we could abandon the project altogether and say, well, you can only talk about a system inside the, the region or the country or the society. We could abandon it altogether, but that would be um, a useless approach. We do need to move towards it, but we need to recognize the weaknesses of these concepts. Uh, I, I like the word plan, actually, and I see how people, when you say the word plan, how people interpret that very differently. And they have a different thing in their head when they say the word plan. And a really good example that I use often is inner city. And this is a simple one, it's very simple, this is inner city. In Germany, Innenstadt means, or the literal translation of inner city, means the city centre. In the UK, inner city means the ring that surrounds the city centre. And there was actually a project uh, funded by the EU, and they got sort of nine months into the project before anyone realised that they were talking about completely different things. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard, I heard a project, I heard some students talking about inner city the other day, and they quoted someone talking about the inner city, and what they meant was the city versus the rural area surrounding it. And I've forgotten which country that applied to. We could go on and on. You could take any of these, actually. It's very difficult. But we do need to think about universal transportable concepts. What can we transport from one place to another? That's a difficulty. And then there's this Anglo-American effect. Because we often work in English, there is a habit of adopting English concepts. Or, uh, or we use the English language, and therefore there's a tendency to adopt concepts from English-speaking countries. Obviously, the US is dominant here. So people talk about zoning a lot, because the US, they talk about zoning. And in actual fact, they're often talking about something completely different. Zoning in the US has a specific meaning related to the subdivision of land. In other places they talk about zoning, what they mean is that they're allocating uses in some sort of policy frame. But they're, they're, they're borrowing these concepts inappropriately. And uh, it's quite nice, actually, to see people borrowing words from the UK. You know, they, in, in the Netherlands, they talk about their um, structure plans. And in yeah. Denmark, they talk about their local plans. And of course, these are all dead anyway in the UK. But they were talking about very different instruments. I'm, a number of ex I'm collecting examples like this, actually. But it's an uh, Anglo-American effect. Another thing, of course, is describing, then comparing, and explaining. And most studies just describe. It's, it's very difficult because there's conceptual problems to, to go on to compare and then to explain. And then what I want to concentrate here is this problem of classifications, because this is what I was studying last year. I've tried to move on from this now, but as this was, so I've got this in my head, I thought I'd present this this morning. These classifications. Now, there's two. In Europe, in Western Europe, where I've been working, there have been two sorts of classifications that have been adopted. And again, Astor and people have seen these before, and Jason and others. But the first one is to use legal frameworks. Now, this is the, the legal framework and the administrative framework is systemic. 
And it is a good idea to understand this if you want to understand differences in planning. But it's been incredibly dominant in thinking about planning. People equate planning to the legal and administrative framework. And if you do that, some early studies, drawn out 60s, 70s, 80s now, you can make a, a clear distinction between um, the uh, uh, English or British approach and the continental approach here. And uh, I use this a lot in teaching. It, it's really very useful, actually. I, I'll come on to that. Um, it is a really useful distinction. It's one which really helps to understand how planning operates uh, in relation to a, a couple of key concepts. Uh, I'll explain that in a moment. But I'll, I'll show now the... Uh, you can then go into levels of complexity. You start off with just two categories, and then you find that the continental systems, in fact, vary even more so. So you end up with four categories uh, and, and one or two outlines uh, in terms of legal families. Now, people have taken this directly and used it to try and understand planning. And they've said, uh, I don't know if anybody's seen Newman and Thorne in his book, for instance. They borrowed this wholesale. Now, any, any commentary or critique or anything, they said, well, these are the legal families. Therefore, this is what the, how the planning system well. So we have an Anglo-American sort of Napoleonic, Nordic, Germanic transition. I, I won't go into it. It's interesting actually, we haven't got anybody here from Eastern Europe, have we? But it's a, it's a bit of a, um, of course they're very annoyed about this it's because they're just classified as, uh, and of course these studies do concentrate on Europe. Actually the, the original, I should mention actually this, is Feigert and Cotts, the people who produce this, these fam legal families on which the styles of planning are based didn't stop at Europe. I've only got this map because that's what I was interested in, but actually they've got other categories that apply around the world as well. They've got three or four other families, including the Islamic family, for instance, um, or the Islamic uh, category of uh, uh, legal system. I'm not going to, I don't have time, you'd be bored stiff anyway. As the, as the people who've seen this before, I could start to explain some of these, but there are differences. I, w I wanted to give you one illustration of how... Um, I'll give you one illustration of how these differences exhibit themselves, going back to that twofold classification here. And then the, the more... What you can do is um, find the essential concept in these differences. And here, um, people have... Got, um, well, in fact, Faludi and um, another guy Dimitri. whose name I forget. Dimitri. Yeah, Dimitri, but also before that, um, I can't remember his name, but somebody, people previously picked up a concept which they think is central to explaining the differences between systems, and this concept is decision moment. I really like this as well. Decision moment, has anybody come across this before? But I, I have a, a doubt about the previous. Uh, the Netherlands is Napoleonic or Germanic? Actually, she allowed to interrupt Go on. Because the map is not so clear. The previous slide. The Netherlands is like in the border between Napoleonic and Germanic. It's funny, actually. They, yeah, it's funny you should mention the Netherlands. The Netherlands is one of the most difficult okay. countries to classify under any sort. And Dominic Stead has done more work on this than I have in relation to the Netherlands. Yeah. But it's very difficult to classify it. And one of the reasons is that it's been influenced by continental systems, by a Germanic approach. It's, it's, sometimes it's put in the Scandinavian family almost because it, it, it has similar approaches. And it's also been heavily influenced by the UK. And that's what happens with smaller countries. They tend to be influenced by others. The same is true in... Uh, to an extent in the whole of Scandinavia as well. It's a sort of hybrid approach there. It's difficult to distinguish. But the Netherlands is at a crossroads, really, yeah. 